Good day, Crime Talk aficionados. My name is Scott Reich, and this is Crime Talk, the most fact-driven, unbiased, true crime channel. As you can see, that's right, we're still on the road, and we still have a docket. First on the docket today, Harvey Weinstein gets to go on a field trip. I doubt he's coming here to Turks and Caicos. Second, Ghislaine Maxwell's new effort to go home, and I bet she would love to make it to Turks and Caicos. New information on that Murdoch case in South Carolina. What not to do when you represent yourself in court and the dumb criminal contestant of the day. Let's talk about it. Good day, Crime Talk aficionados. My name is Scott Reich, and this is Crime Talk. Thanks for watching. If you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button as well as that little bell so that you receive notifications of when we go live or put up new content. Now, as we mentioned before, today, still down in beautiful Turks and Caicos, celebrating the lovely Miss Kristen's birthday week. Fabulous place, best beaches in the world, and I'm not exaggerating that at all. I have traveled the world, been at some amazing beaches, and this is by far the best I've ever seen. All right, let's get straight to the docket. One guy who will never see a beautiful beach ever again, Harvey Weinstein. That's right, the disgraced film producer. Remember, he got convicted in New York, classified as a sexual violent predator. Well, he still had all those cases pending in California, and he was hoping that he was going to get to stay in New York well, you know, because it was getting comfortable for him, and he says that he's receiving medical treatment there. Well, California wants him in L.A. so that they can try him for cases out there. Now, Weinstein's lawyers were arguing that, hey, he has health issues, and he needs to stay on the East Coast, and don't worry about uh, sending him to L.A., because that's just gonna complicate everything. Well, as most DAs will tell a judge, and this is what the DA told the judge in New York, don't they have medical treatment facilities in California as well? They do, even if you're in custody. It may not be the best healthcare that Mr. Weinstein was used to receiving. However, it is going to be the bare minimum healthcare that he is going to get. The court decided in New York that he gets to go to California and he will be extradited out to L.A. sometime in mid-July. Harvey, don't think of it as punishment. Think of it as a new adventure. You're kind of like going home just without all the perks of maybe your private aircraft and everything else. Now you just get an escort of a different kind. All right. Next on the docket, Ghislaine Maxwell still trying to go home. As you know, Ghislaine Maxwell was a very close confidant, friend, right-hand person for that disgraced guy financier that we refer to as Jeff here, because why? That's right, YouTube will shut us down if we mention his name. Well, as you may recall, first she tried to get out saying she wasn't a flight risk. Then she was saying, hey, let me post large bonds so that I can be released. Trust me on this one, is what she basically said. Then it was the extreme lockdown conditions uh, that they were holding Miss Maxwell in while she's awaiting her trial. Um, and the judge rejected that argument as well. And now the new argument is, is that she is having literally uh, feces from mice and sewage that are flowing through her cell, literally raining down on her. Now, I'm not sure what jurisdiction the court thinks they have to correct housing problems and maintenance issues at a federal detention center. Let me tell you, I think they have zero. I've been in federal court oftentimes where defendant will say, hey, I'm not receiving the medical attention I need, or I need to get my eyeglasses sent. And the judge says, I have no jurisdiction over that, but maybe we can ask the marshals. The marshals can be persuaded by the federal judge to say, maybe we could look into that. That's about the best that the court can do. There's nothing that has changed that is going to allow Ghislaine Maxwell 
uh, to be released on a bond in this particular situation. Now, the court hasn't ruled yet, but I'm putting my money on denied, okay? Denied. Elaine Maxwell, you need to sit down, work with your attorneys, focus on your defense, and quit worrying about going home because you're not going anywhere. All right, let's take a quick recess. Please go to crimetalksearch.com, sign up for a background subscription service. You'll be happy you did. If there's anyone out there you were ever curious about, what was in their background, now is the time to do it. If you're going to get involved with somebody, now is the time to do it. When you go to crimetalksearch.com, you put in the name, literally millions of public records are searched, and a report is generated. And it's going to give you a report. If they have multiple social media accounts, you're going to find it. If they have multiple phone numbers, multiple email addresses, it's going to be found. And more importantly, you're going to get information regarding criminal history. Hopefully the person you're searching has none whatsoever, but if it's there, it's going to be found. You're going to get everything you'd want to know, whether you're going into business or whether you're going into a personal relationship, you're going to be able to find out the information you want to know. So go to crimetalksearch.com, sign up today. You'll be happy you did. All right, next on the docket. Okay, we talked the other day and I'm telling you, I just have a hunch that this is going to be a very interesting case. This is the case of the wife and a son of a very prominent family. Uh, the father is an attorney. The great grandfather was an attorney going back to like, you know, turn of this, uh, 1908 in South Carolina. The young Paul Murdaugh got into a little bit of trouble. He was involved in a boating accident while he was allegedly intoxicated. Criminal charges were filed and then the case was dismissed, perhaps because of who he was. Hmm. Well, the civil case was still ongoing, but the father and the spouse of Maggie Murdoch showed up the other day at their hunting cabin and found both his wife and his son had been shot. They had been murdered. So the father and the husband of the deceased in this particular case, Alex Murdoch, is not considered a suspect in any way whatsoever. The cause of death for both victims has been released in the autopsy and it's multiple gunshot wounds. Why is that significant? Because, well, no one was really sure at first, was this some sort of murder-suicide? Well, it appears not the case. Must not have had the weapons remain behind as well. So who would want to kill these two individuals? A lot of speculation. The word is that Paul Murdaugh has quite a temper and can get very angry when he drinks. Perhaps somebody wasn't amused by his drunken antics. More is going to uh, be investigated in this case. They're going to find out who did this simply for the fact of who their family was, for Paul and Maggie Murdoch. This one, I think, is going to be a made-for-TV movie. That's just my hunch. We'll see how it plays out. Not far from. If I'm wrong, I will let you know. Next on the docket. What not to do in court. There's an old adage that states, he who represents himself in court has a fool for a client. Well, meet a fool, Ronnie O'Neill III. He's charged with two counts of first degree murder and one count of attempted murder. He is facing the death penalty for allegedly killing his girlfriend and their daughter. And during his opening statement, he literally yelled at the jurors, basically stating that the government had to tamper with the evidence to meet their high burden of proof beyond a reasonable doubt, because otherwise the burden would not be met. Therefore, the government had to tamper. An interesting theory for sure, usually something you don't lay out in opening statement. If that's your theory, you wait and see how things develop. But that's what happens when you represent yourself and you have no idea what the hell you're doing. The district attorney's opening statement was a little less um, dramatic. They apparently stated that O'Neill beat his girlfriend to death. He ran back inside the house and killed his daughter using a hatchet. Pretty straightforward theory of the case. Somehow I think it will in fact prevail. So Mr. O'Neill, you're not our dumb criminal contestant of the week, that's for sure, but you certainly could be a contender, but now you just made it to the main news feed. Congratulations. 
we'll see how things go. We'll give you the presumption of innocence, but I think you need to get comfortable sitting in your jail cell for the rest of your life. Next on the docket, our dumb criminal contestant of the day. Gilbert Crantress. He was stopped the other day by police in Suffolk County. And when the police made contact and ran him for once in warrants, they found out that his license had been suspended. 99 times, okay? 99 times. At a certain point, you have to know your license is suspended and you're gonna do it anyway. So Mr. Kentress, you are a dumb criminal contestant of the day because unfortunately, even if I completely disagree with this, you can't drive if you don't have a driver's license. And let me explain what I mean by that. One of the dumbest things, particularly in states that are spread out, maybe it works in an urban city, but let me tell you, all the legislators out there, all the prosecutors, all the judges, if you really think that you're going to stop somebody from driving their car where there's no public transportation, because they don't have a valid driver's license or get suspended because of points, guess what? You are completely fooling yourself. It's simply not going to happen. Yes, charge them lots of money, but do not take away their license. They're gonna drive anyway, and then they probably drive without insurance. Well, we'd rather have people insured than driving without insurance. So therefore, it's just good public policy to do that. But somebody down at the state house says, I know what we'll do. We'll get them to stop driving We'll suspend their license. That'll show them it never works. All right, that's all we have for you today. Thanks for watching. We have a couple more days here in beautiful Turks and Caicos, and we'll be in the Crime Talk studios next week. We'll see you next time on Crime Talk.